Good morning, everybody. Hi. Hey, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming out to church. And I also want to welcome everybody who's in Isanti today. Thank you so much for coming out to Isanti for church today. It's great to have you. And also, everybody who's watching online, hey, great to have you watching online as well. It's awesome. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, we are in our series, The Me That God Wants Me To Be. And uh, in this, this whole series is five weeks long, but uh, sometimes it's important to to follow it along. And I know some of you weren't here for the first week, or maybe you missed that. I'm going to try to catch you up to speed just a little bit. But this is a great time to just remind you that if you do miss a week, you can always watch it online, as some of you are doing right now. You can watch it online and catch up. And what we, we started this series last week talking about the, the me that God wants me to be with this whole kind of premise, and that is this. Every single one of us are a little bit disappointed in who we are. All of us are. We're a little disappointed in decisions we've made, things we've done in the past. Sometimes we're maybe a little embarrassed even of our past and things we've done. Sometimes we carry that through. Some of us even are so far as we get to a place in life that we're ashamed of ourselves. And I think it's true for every human being, and I think it's true for all of us, that, there, that, that none of us are really the me that we wanted to be we're all a little bit disappointed. And you know, the Bible tells us why that is and, and why that happens. And really, it comes down to our decisions that we make. And most of us, all of us, have a little bit of selfishness, a little bit of, you know, I, I, I don't really, I, I want what's best for me now, or I want what I think I want. And we, you know, I'm greedy, or I make these decisions. And we make these decisions, and it ends up disappointing us. And here's, here's why we make these decisions. The Bible says this, that there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. There is a way that seems right to every one of us. We have made decisions in our life that, well, that makes sense. or that's, Well, uh, that's just what I should do. It, you know, it doesn't matter if God says this or if there's, you know, a, a different way or people have different, different advice. We have all kind of ran our lives with, there's a way that just seems right. It's just, well, this is what I think I do. Or this is just what I want to do. I want to do what I want to do. And at the time, it seems like a good decision. At the time, it seems like that will get me more money or I will have more time off or I will enjoy myself. But... Those things in our lives, every one of us, that we've made that just seemed right to us, most of the time or oftentimes, in the end, it leads to hurt, to pain, to heartache, to disappointment. We've all experienced those things in our life. Therefore, we find ourselves a little disappointed in who we are or who we've become. But God's intention for us, and I know that you know we, we all are in a different place in our relationship with God. And, and I'm not sure that everyone believes this, but according to what the Bible says, God has a plan for our lives, that God has more for our lives than we could even imagine. That, that, God want, that God thinks every one of us is special, and we are special in His sight. And God doesn't want us to be disappointed in ourselves. As a matter of fact, the Bible says this about how God views us. It says, for I know the plans, God is saying this to you and to me. I know the plans that I have for you. God has plans for you. You might think, but I am not really a follower of God. I, I'm not sure I really believe or, or I'm so old now. Okay. Listen, I'm just telling you, this is what the Bible says. That God himself says, I have plans for your life. You're not just a mistake. You didn't just happen. You know, it's not, you're not an accident, but, but I have a plan for you. And that plan, says the Lord, says that plan, they are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope that God has a plan for your life. And you may not have found it. You may not be sure it's out there. But God has a plan for your life. And that plan for your life is good. And it is awesome. And it is fulfilling. And it is completing. And it is satisfying. It is a plan that you, in the inside of your very emotions, can feel a joy that is greater than you've ever experienced in anything in life. That, you can that every one of us can experience in our life 
this contentment and this joy and this hope and this future in our lives. That, that we can have purpose in our life. That we are important and there's a purpose for us. And that is the me God wants me to be. It is. But last week we came up with this. This is kind of the saying for the, for the whole series and that is this. For me to be the me that God wants me to be, it means that I can't be the me I'd naturally be. I can't be the, the me that I naturally want to do. I can't do what makes sense to me, what, what makes reason to me. If I'm going to be the me that God wants me to be, I can't just be the, the natural me, the things that I'd rather do. Now, we did something last week we've never done ever since I've been pastor of a church. And if you're a guest with us today, you might think this is a little weird. And I'll admit, it, it's, it's a little weird. But um, we're going to do this because I believe this is so important for our lives. And everybody in Isanti, and even if you're watching this online, what I'm asking everybody to do is just repeat this out loud. To just, to not, not repeat, to say it with me. If we could say this together out loud, because, because I really hope, I do, through this series, that this becomes ingrained, this becomes a part of our life. And so let's all say it out loud together with me. On three, okay? One, two, three. To be the me God wants me to be means I can't be the me I'd naturally be. And, and, it, and it's so true. And what God wants us to be is absolutely amazing. I mean, really, it's, it's what God's plan for our lives is. And I, I know that, and I kind of just got to be honest with you, I'm not there yet. As, as an individual person, personally, I am not there yet. I am not the me that God wants me to be. But what gives me great hope is I'm not where I used to be. I remember where I used to be. And I am not there anymore. I have moved along and started to becoming more of the me that God wants me to be. And you know how I know that? I know that because my life today has a level of peace in it that I've never had before. My life today has this, this secure feeling that whether the, the roof falls in or whether it doesn't, you know, I'm fine. And, and, and I know that I've, I've never had this before in my life and I'm not the same that I used to be. I've moved along and I, I know that even though I'm not there yet, I, I in my own life am experiencing a, a peace, a direction, a purpose. I mean, I've I feel a purpose, that I'm not a mistake, that God has a plan for my life. And I'll tell you, it's a great place to be. What I'm discovering in my life is becoming the me that God wants me to be is way better off than the me I used to be. It's, it's way better off. But I kind of had a slow start to this thing. It was uh, not until I was in my mid-20s that I, did I really start taking a look at, you know, does God have a purpose and a plan for my life? Does God really want to? Because... Because before that, I kind of had this idea. I kind of had the idea that in order to find fulfillment, in order to find peace and joy, and in order to find like purpose in my life, I was under the impression that that meant you had to do whatever you wanted to do. And I did. And I lived my life like that way for, for a while where I really felt like, hey, if I want to be happy, if I want to have peace in my life, then, then I can't listen to everybody else's rules. I got to do what I want to do. And I really believe that. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want to do and I'm going to look for pleasure so that I can be fulfilled and I will be satisfied. But what I found out was that was so wrong. As a matter of fact, when I did what I wanted to do, it didn't bring peace. It didn't bring satisfaction. What it brought in my life was struggle and turmoil and, and seriously, heartache and sadness and difficulty in my life. And so I was mistaken on what, what really brings this about in life. And I think so many people today, I mean, I don't know about you, but there's so, we live in a culture today where people feel, generally kind of feel, like the way to peace and the way to happiness and fulfillment is to have more money and to have more free time and to have more toys and to have life made. 
I mean, I think we just live in a, in a culture. Maybe you don't think that way, but so many people in our culture just kind of feel like, hey, if I want to really be happy with me, if I want to have a great life, I, it means I need to make more money. I need to have more stuff. I need to go where I want to go. I need to do what I want to do, you know, and, and have more enjoyment. But here's the problem. That will never bring us to the me that God wants us to be. That does not bring a deep sense of purpose and joy and full fulfillment in life. It doesn't do it. Because what I discovered is this is a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual thing. In order to be what God wants us to be and have a full life, it's a spiritual issue. And we can try to solve it any other way, but we will never reach it until we address the spiritual part, the spiritual issue. And our spiritual journey starts at saying yes to Jesus. And I didn't know this before my mid-20s. It really starts. A spiritual connection, a spiritual journey, a relationship with God starts with saying yes to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the only one that can bring us into a relationship with God. That when we say, Jesus offers us forgiveness of sins. He says, hey, I I died and I paid the penalty for your sins, for what you've done. And and we can't have a relationship with God until we accept for ourselves. And we say, yeah, Jesus, hey, I'll accept your offer to take all my sins and to give me a clean slate. Like, hey, and, and it starts there. And then that begins a journey. It begins a journey as we become followers of Jesus Christ, doing what Jesus asks us to do, doing, following his example, obeying God. We're on this journey to becoming, it's just like a journey to becoming more of, of who Jesus, who God really intended and really wants us to be. And, it, and it's just, it's this journey. And I, I don't know where, you know, where are you on this journey? I mean, so, some of you, you're, you're way over here, you know. I mean, the journey is that way, and that's what God wants us to be. And some of you are here. You've been, you have been followers of Jesus Christ for many years. There are some of you who are, are faithful, follow, you know the Bible inside now, you know, and you, you, you uh, attend church, you support, you, you know, you're just, you're just a follower of God. You've submitted your life to Him. And some of you are here. And, you know, and some of you are might maybe, hey, it's been a few years and I'm discovering things. It's good. Some of you might be right here of, hey, I just said yes to Jesus Christ in the last year or so. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm just right here, you know. And, and uh, I, I need to tell you something that if you're right here, so some of you might be over here and not to the point of saying yes to Jesus yet. If that's you, I would love to talk to you or, you know, because I believe that to start this journey, we have to say yes to Jesus. But here's, here's something we hear often. Well, if you say yes to Jesus, you know, you're going to be full of God's presence. And you're going to feel, you know, and life's going to be awesome. And, you know, that's not necessarily true. And I'm sorry if, if I've ever said that. I'm sorry if you've heard people tell you that, man, all you've got to do is say yes to Jesus. And, oh, man, you're just fulfilled. And you're good. Gosh, it's not really true. You say yes to Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You're going to heaven. But as far as being fulfilled, having purpose, security in your life. And listen, some of you are struggling with this. Like, yeah, I, or some people even say, I tried that Jesus thing. It didn't work for me. Yeah, it did work to forgive your sins. But just saying yes to Jesus is the start. It's not until we follow him do we start receiving this fullness and this peace and this joy and as, as we are following him. But here's a, here's a cool thing. And listen, I, I don't want you to miss this. This is a cool thing about this, this journey. It really isn't very important where you are. It's not important if you're right here or if you're right here or if you're right here. It's not that important. Okay, so just relax. If you think, oh man, that guy's been a Christian for a long time, a follower, and that's great. And, and you're just here. Listen, that's not the important part. The important part is what direction are you moving? Really, that, that's the everything in this. What direction are you going to becoming the me that God wants me to be? Are you moving in this direction? Because, because for every one of us, it, it's, it's, 
you know, if you if you just said yes to Jesus and everything's brand new to you, but you're but you're saying, hey, Jesus says he he wants me to to forgive and do this, and you go, wow, I, I do that, and you know, uh, be like learn the Bible, I'm doing that. Like, hey, you are becoming the person that God wants you to be, and you will discover joy and fullness and contentment on this journey. But it's not really where you're at that matters. It's what direction because. And and listen carefully. There are some of us, we're here. But we stop growing. In the direction we're going, we stop making forward motion. And the direction we're going is actually backwards. Actually slipping backwards. And, and, And I know that if you've been a follower of Jesus for a long time, you still remember all the Bible verses. You still remember the Christian lifestyle. But actually following Jesus, you're going this way. And and I'll tell you, listen, in order for you and I to be the person that God wants us to be, we have to be growing. We must be growing all the time. Growing. It's not where we're at. It's what direction are we moving to become the full person that God intends us to. And the Bible, the Bible says it this way. The Peter verse says this. For this very reason, this very reason he's talking about faith in Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. Because of everything that Jesus has done for us. He says, for this very reason, make every effort to add, to add to your faith goodness. You don't stop at faith. You move on. You keep it. You add to your faith goodness. And to goodness, knowledge. You keep growing. You keep, you will never learn it all. It's a journey to continue to add knowledge. And to knowledge, to add self-control. And there are levels of self-control, but to keep adding the self-control. And as he's going through this list, it's not an exhaustive list, but the point here that he's making is that God wants you and I to be growing in our life and in our spiritual development. Always growing. And to add self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. Hey, when time gets rough, when things go bad, when, you know, when, when it gets a little bit rough, when your faith, Shaheen talked about it two weeks ago, that when, you're, when your faith is challenged, to add to that, to keep growing and add perseverance and, and, and increasing numbers. And to perseverance, you have to add godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. And he goes on. For if you possess these qualities in, and listen, this is important, in increasing measure, that in, God wants you and I to be growing from the very beginning when we say yes to Jesus Christ all the way through our lives to become the person that God wants us to be. And it's an increasing measure. We don't get to a spot where, you know, that's just it. They will keep, listen, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus, saying yes to Jesus, isn't enough. That isn't where it stops. That God wants you and I to be growing. And here's... I'm telling you, this is just the most interesting thing. Here's what's really interesting about this being growing thing. Every single one of us, whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, every one of us have had times in our life where we made steps of growth. Every one of us. Maybe it was, you know, you went to a counselor and they just said, hey, this is good in your life. You you need to do this. And, And every one of us have experienced growing, like a spiritual growth in our life in a sense of this. Every one of us have, have learned to do something and apply it, like forgiveness. Maybe, maybe in your life you're in a situation where you just, life was bad, you, you couldn't get on in a relationship, whatever, and, and somewhere along the line somebody told you, you need to forgive to move on, and you did. And here's what's interesting. When you did, you discovered peace and a certain amount of contentment. And really, you, you discovered a certain amount of a secure feeling. It was a positive thing that happened in your life. Every one of us have done that. Maybe, maybe some of you have, you know what, you've, you found a position in your life that you grew and you, maybe you used to be kind of lazy or put things off, but 
you decided to grow and you, you know, you became more disciplined. And you, what happened through that? When you decided to grow, you discovered it's a good thing. It's a great thing. I feel better. It's like life is better. Some of you have grown past a, an addiction where an addiction just had your life, you know, and it, it, under control and it was destroying everything from you. But, but you, through help or through somebody, somebody sell, said and helped you that you grew you made a step of growth where you're no longer bound by that addiction. And what did you discover when you grew? Joy. Light your life back. You enjoyed a certain level of peace. But here's the odd thing. This is the oddest thing. It's just our nature. Oddest thing is this. Every one of us has discovered that growing has brought a blessing to our life. You would think we would just keep growing. Wouldn't you? Maybe if you... If you discover that, yeah, I did that, that was a spiritual principle. Maybe you didn't hear it in church, but that was a godly principle. And you applied it, and it was good. You would think we would just keep growing because, man, that was so good, I'm going to do another one. That was so good, I'm going to do another one. You would think we'd keep growing. But here's the problem. We're human. You and I got issues. We do. We have a nature. It is our human nature To just say, nope, I've grown enough. I changed enough. I mean, I used to be a jerk, and now I'm not. At least some will say. But, you know, hey, and and every every one of us, no matter who we are, we get to a place, our human nature to say, no. My gosh, look at how much I've changed. I mean, I used to do that, I don't do that anymore, and now I'm this, and I'm forgiving, and I I have this in my life, and every one of us will say, no. But, you know what, But, but God says, hey, I want you to keep growing, and we say, No. I've reached enough. I'm better than everybody else. Well, I've done so much for God. My life has come so far. Look, and I forgave these people. And we get to a place where we stop. As a matter of fact, every one of us get to a place where we put our heels in the ground and say, no, I've grown enough. I've grown enough. I've developed enough. I'm better than most. I've done so much. Now I'm done. It's our nature. We all have a tendency to do it. Some of us might stop right here. Some of us might stop here. Some of us, have, But we all have a tendency to do it. But remember this. Remember this. Don't ever forget this. Our saying. To be the me that God wants me to be. That's for all of us. It means that we can't be the me that I'd naturally be. It is this natural thing that we cannot do if we are going to be the me that God wants me to be. If for you and I to be the most that God wants us to be, it means that we can no longer in our lives be what comes natural to do the things that we feel we can do, to follow this human nature that we have. We have to not be that way anymore to become what God wants us to become. And none of us, our nature isn't to keep developing. Our nature isn't to keep growing. Our nature is to say enough. And here's my question to you. Are you still growing? Maybe you're here. Awesome. I'm so happy for you but are you still growing? Maybe you made that decision to say yes to Jesus. Didn't move much beyond that. Or maybe you're here. Oh, yeah, a lot. I mean, my life's really changed. A lot of things have happened. I'm a follower of Jesus. It's cool. But are you still growing? Maybe you're here. I know it all. Are you still growing? Because here's the point for all of us, and please, this is true for all of us. It's true for me. It's true for you. Try not to reject this. It's just true for all of us. And that is this. Every one of us, we only grow until we say no. As soon as we say no, we stop to grow. We can only grow until we say no. And I'll be honest with you. There are some things in all of our lives that we're tempted to say no. 
well, God, I, I believe in you and I followed you this far, but you want me to what? No. The day you say no is the day you stop to grow. You stop growing. And, and, and let me, there's a lot of things. I just want you to think about it. And I have to think about it too. Where in your life have you been following Jesus? But the Bible said something, pastor said something that the Bible says, or God's moved on your heart and says, I want you to follow and obey this. And you say, no, I've done enough. No, I'm not going to keep going. It's the day you stop growing. And remember, it's not so important where you are. The only important thing is what direction are you moving? And let me tell you some popular thing. I know I'm human. I'm with you. We all struggle with some of the same things. But some big things in our culture is this. Forgiveness is huge. Well, I'll follow Jesus and I'll do... And you want me to... Jesus says, you want me to forgive that person? I'll forgive everybody else except that person. You stop growing. You stop your movement to becoming the person that God wants you to be. Loving others. I can love most people, but I can't love them. You stop growing. How about being involved? I don't mean to be picking on anybody. It's, this is true for all of us. Jesus said, listen, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you don't have to listen to any of this. But if you are, if you're a follower of Jesus, when he says, I want you to use your gifts in the body, and you say, no, you just stop growing. No. I'll do other things, but I'm not doing that. Huge one. He's giving. It's our money. Jesus says, I want you to be a part of the body. Jesus says, I want all my followers to, to give and support my work. It's a, it's a part of worshiping and honoring me as your God. When you and I say, oh, no, I'll do anything for you, God, anything except that. No. We can only grow until we say no. And once we say no, we stop growing. And we will never become the person that God wants us to be. Remember, and I just want to go over the saying again. Remember is true for all of us. To be the me that God wants me to be, which is so amazing. It means I can't be the me that I'd naturally be. That I want to do. My human nature wants to do. I can't do that. You and I can't do that. To be the me. And I just want to close with saying this. Are you aware? Maybe some of you aren't. Are you aware of where you dug your heels in and said no? Because that's where you need to go back to. If you want to become the person that God wants you to be, you have to go back to that place and submit to God and say, I want to grow. I want to grow. And I can't grow if I say no. And I want to grow. Think about that area. Go back to that in your mind. And say, God, I want to continue to grow. I'll follow you in that area as well. I want to turn it over now to Shaheen and I say, go ahead and close the service. And we're going to close the service here. Let's just talk to God. Father, I thank you so much that you have a plan for my life i don't want to live life not knowing that there's a purpose for me that that there's a reason i'm alive and lord i want to feel your security and your joy i i I want to feel father god so much love and i want i want to be a full complete person but the only way i can ever be that is to not be the me that I'd naturally be. And I submit myself. I, I submit that area that I say no in. I submit that to you, and I'm going to follow you. Even if it's against what I want to do, I'm going to follow you. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.